こんにちは。皆さん、岡田先生です。今日は日本語さんの文法の勉強をしましょう。最初に文法の復習をしましょう。ノートを取ってください。First thing we are going to 復習 review would be informal speech. We spent a lot of time in the Nihongo Ni textbook going over informal speech.、Um, specifically, we called it plain forms. Remember that desu and mas is going to be used for all formal speech, and most of your writing, 99% of your writing for this class, will be informal speech. Because remember, only our informal speech would be used when we are speaking to tomodachi or people below us.、Um, But in most cases,、um, there is really no reason for you to speak in a、um, informal speech, especially if you're in a business situation or any of this. This entire list is not new to you. This is all fukushu. The only thing that is atarashi for you would be the let, masho, but I will go over that in、um, unit one. We have informal speech in the form of keyoshi. Keyoshi are adjectives. Remember, there's two types of keyoshi there are e adjectives and na adjectives. Again,、um, desu and masu are our formal speech, and then changing it into the plain form makes it informal. This is all、um, fukushu. This is the plain form of meishi, nouns. Remember, again, nouns usually end in des and deshita, de wa arimasen, and so forth, so on. This is not new for you. This is all fukushu. Make sure you have notes for all of these plain forms in your. In your noto, because I will keep referring to them.、Um, you know, last year in the Nihongo Ni textbook, there were quite a few times when we had to refer back to the plain forms. And if you didn't know them and you don't know it by heart, it's really difficult for you to use、uh, more advanced grammar forms. So remember, there's the formal and informal speech styles are really important. Um, there's a few things in your textbook that I do want you to go back through and read yourself and review for yourself so that you have some、um, idea of it. I would like you to copy them down into your noto so you have somewhere to look at it and you have a chance to write these things down. There is the aizuchi, which are.、Um, How you would say things like um, uh, yes, uh huh, these are all aizuchi. And then we have particles like go and o that are used on top of words in order to make it more honorific or more formal.、Um, these are obviously things that I want you to learn so that you know、um, what makes something more formal versus informal. This is not honorific form.、Um, this The year we're really going to focus on the informal and the formal, obviously, the formal, and then、um, give you more ideas of informal. But、um, next year we'll go into more honorific, which is an even more super formal way. It's kind of difficult, but、um, even people who speak Nihongo fluently have. Problems with honorific. So, this is still easy. So, I do want you to go through and look at these pages.、Um, you'll see page 8, page 9, page 10, page 11, page 14 have some charts that give you some idea of、um, speech styles. So, nouns and pronouns, family terminology, which we have covered in Nihongo Ichi. So, that's, that should be really easy for you.、Um, there are some special terminology,、um, things like Agemas versus Sashi Agemas, which we did last year.、Um, calling someone Sama and San versus Kun and Chan. These are all kind of pronouns that you might use.、Um, so I do want to make sure that you go over that. And then, of course, on page 15, there is some mentioning of.、Um, Omission of particles and using、um, te instead of to for quotations. These are all things that are in your fukushu.、Um, I am not going to necessarily be really、um, stickler for that in your notes just because I don't think that it's as important. I think it's something that just comes from practicing Nihongo. You'll notice 
these things more and more. It's more things that I would rather you notice them rather than um, really focus on using them. Because again, we're practicing formal speech um, and informal speech uh, you can use separately with your tomodachi and most likely not with sensei. Sensei might use it for you though. Okay, jane. Ichika no bunpo ni hairimasu. So we're going into unit ones of bunpo, and I um, some of them are new and some of them are review. So please take really good notes in this. So ichiban saisho ni ano ichika no bunpo de ichiban daiji na. Uh, noun modifiers this. So we're going to go through quite a few noun modifiers. This is just a few and then I'll go over some more um, specific ones with clauses and things. So noun modifiers, remember, is about modifying a noun. So in other words, when you are talking about a noun and describing it more, we would use adjectives and things like that in English. So a noun modifier can be um, different uh, ways to describe a noun. But in this case, we have two here. We have the noun modifier no and noun clarifier to you. So we have noun no noun, job description no noun, a person's name. So it could be for uh, no example, Rei ni uh, no sensei no Okada san. So you can say, um, uh, sensei is a job description. No, and then Okada-san would be her name. And then the other one, which is a noun cl clarifier, Toyu, we can have a specific name. So, for example, Okada-sensei, Toyu, the category would be, um, let's say, Hito. Okada-sensei, Toyu, Hito. So, um, a person that's named Okada-sensei. We can use this for other things as well. So, example, Titanic to you, Ega, or um, Harry Potter to you, uh, no, um, character, character. Um, we can have Catcher in the Rye to you, Hon, so specific name to you, uh, category. We can also categorize with Toshite. And that, this is an interesting one. Um, you would use it in a, uh, usually you would use it for your, um, well, obviously you're modifying a meishi, but you're modifying it with a category, which is different than this one before. It's a little bit different. This is a name and then category versus a specific thing in a category. So for example, um, we might say kudamono is my category. My specific thing is lingo. I might say kudamoto, kudamono toshite lingo wa oishii desu. Kudamono toshite watashi wa lingo ga ichiban suki desu. So kudamono toshite something ga blank. Uh, how about watashi wa yasai toshite ano so categorizing with meishi in this way is not specifically a name like the one before specific name is more of a namae because we use toyu versus toshite which would be a category of something with a specific object or thing. All right, another category-ish thing is the occupation. So occupation wo shiteiru is what we would use. And we would actually, we can actually use this for um, a modifying of a noun as well. Um, we can either say, let me go back two slides. We can either say job description no person. So um, let's see, a job description, we can say, Isha no ano, Tanaka-san. Isha no Tanaka-san. Isha is the job description. 
Tanaka-san is the ten person's name. And then in this case, Isha wo shiteiru Tanaka-san. They both mean exactly the same. Isha wo shiteiru Tanaka-san. Exactly the same. The difference is that um, this one is a little bit more specific in the fact that they that's their job versus that's their persona. So Isha wo shiteiru Tanaka-san would be um, Tanaka-san who does the job of being a doctor versus Isha no Tanaka-san would be the doctor named Tanaka-san, if that makes sense. Um, that's what it is. So occupation wo shiteiru is um, used for that. So uh, when you're saying that, oh, that's your job, you might say sensei wo shiteimasu. あの、店員をしています。あの、ウェイターをしています。あの、医者をしています。看護婦をしています。サラリーマンをしています。あなたは何をしていますか? Um, doesn't always mean what are you doing? It sometimes means what is your occupation or what do you do for a living? Okay, so this one isn't specifically in your chapter, but I think it's really important. Like Shika and Shika is in this chapter, but I think um, we need to also use uh, go over bakari because I think it's really important. And um, I don't know why they didn't include it here, but I'm going to include it here. So dake, you already learned it kyonen last year. We learned dake is only and you have to use a positive ending. Not always, but um, you usually use it with a positive uh, ending. And shika is the same thing. It also means only, but it uses an ending of a negative. So that becomes nothing but a blank. And then bakari is also only, but the context is a little bit different. So the context is different for all three. I want to explain all of them, but I will go through them in um, order that I have up here. So that's I only like apples and I will only eat apples. Instead of saying I'm replacing the wall with dake. Um, I can also replace or follow a particle. So I can say Disneyland dake ni ikimasu or i can say watashi wa disneyland dake ikimasu i will only go to um disneyland and then of course it follows the particles de to kara made um watashi wa ano nihon made dake ikimasen or ikimasu komen watashi wa nihon Made dake ikimasu. I will only go up to Japan or only until Japan. And also, we make sure that dake is the word is connected to the thing that is only. Unlike English, because English, you can put it anywhere willy nilly. And we talked about this before. It's the same thing as mo that you learned in Nihongo Ichi. Remember, we talked about how mo can go all over the place in ego is mean also but in Nihongo the mole whatever it's connected to is the thing that is also in dake is the same same thing now shika I'm gonna go over shika shika is also only but since it's used only with a negative ending it becomes nothing but a blank so watashi wa ringo shika tabemasen watashi wa ringo shika suki janai desu watashi wa so I don't go to anywhere but Disneyland. I only I eat nothing but um, apples. I don't think and I don't like anything but um, apples. 
So the difference between dake and shika really, I mean, when we get to it, we can say that dake is a situation in a neutral context, just stating some fact that we have versus shika um, shows that there is an exclusiveness to it. So ringo shika tabemasen, it's exclusive to ringo um, and that perhaps there just really isn't enough of it. Um, nothing but that there's nothing else but that so therefore there is a exclusivity or there's a small amount of choices so we have dake versus shika now the third form which is bakari bakari can be used with negative or positive and it also means only but the thing of bakari is that it becomes something that we are dealing with of a large number. So, watashi wa ringo bakari tabemashita. Watashi wa ringo bakari tabemasu. Watashi wa ringo bakari tabemasen. So, watashi wa ringo bakari tabemasu. I eat a heck of a lot of only apples. So much so that nothing else can exist. And then, watashi wa ringo bakari tabemasen. I eat nothing that has to do with apples, right? I, I spend my days just not eating apples. So the difference between the three can seem very like insignificant in that all of them technically mean only, but there is a different context for each. Um, sometimes it's difficult to figure out which one makes sense and Honestly, if you asked any um, native speaker, they'll just say, well, it just sounds right. But that's not good enough for us English to um, Japanese learners, right? You want to know why there is a difference between the three. And what I can tell you is dake is much more in a situation that has a new neutral context. It is probably the one that's used most often. Shika is whenever you have a negative context, nothing but that, that's when you use shika. So dake and shika are used much more commonly. Um, if in doubt, just use dake, or if in doubt, use shika with a negative. Um, bakari always um, makes you think that there is a large number of it. So, um, nihon ni ittara, nihon jin bakari mimashita, meaning that all I saw were Japanese people versus nihon jin dake mimashita means I only saw Japanese people, which I guess, like, if you translate it that way, you you could just think of it as only versus all but. Um, it becomes um, a, an idea of a large number of something so much that nothing else can exist. That's when you use bakari. All right, so the next one um, is demo versus mo, um, using with a question word. Remember, question words are dare, nani, or nan, doko, itsu, doshite, do yatte. And you connect that to, um, you can have a particle in there, um, and you know what the particles mean, so it should kind of help you. But um, you use it plus demo and plus mo. Demo um, ending with a positive and mo ending with a negative. So let me give you an example. Dare demo tabete mo ides. Dare demo tabete mo ides. Versus dare mo tabete wa ikemasen. So, dare demo tabete mo ides. Anyone may eat it versus dare mo tabete wa ikemasen. No one may eat it. So, demo is used with a positive and it becomes any blank. And then, question word mo with a negative becomes no blank. So, Dare demo anyone, nan demo anything, doko demo anywhere, itsu demo anytime, doshite demo, um, however, um, however, any way, in any way, and then doyatte demo in any case or any way. And then we have um, question word mo, so dare mo, no one, nani mo, 
nothing. Um, doko mo, nowhere. Itsumo, no time. In other words, all times. Remember that word, itsumo? This is what it comes from. Um, itsumo means always because there is no time in it, it, in it to exist. So no time equals all times, always. Um, do shite mo means, um, do shite mo means because or just because. Um, there is no why and therefore it could be anyone, any, any, any way. Um, do yatte mo is like no how and therefore no way of doing something. So, these are just things that you just need to know when you use a question word demo, it becomes any something and it usually ends in a positive. And then question word mole, um, usually use it with a negative and that is gonna become no something, no body, nothing, nowhere. And then it's mole, remember, means no time, therefore always. Okay, so here is that other plain form that I told you that we will be learning new. When you're going from masho, let's, the plain form for that is the o sound. So I have listed here the mini bi, kigishi, kimas, shimas. Remember, kimas and shimas are irregular verbs, and eto on syllable is plus yo. And this is just a form that you just have to remember. Reini, we might have nomimas, nomo, shinimas, shino. We probably don't want to say let's die. But asobimas, azobo, um, kaimas, kao, let's buy, tachimas, tato, let's stand, suarimas, suaro, let's sit, uh, kakimas, kako, let's write, ka, um, oyogimas, oyogo, let's swim, um, dashimas, daso, let's take out, kimas, koyo, uh, let's come this way, and then shio, uh, shimas, shio, Let's do something, and then ento plus yo. So mimas mio, tabemas tabeo. So those are the plain forms for the all form. And really, you will not use this form very often, but there are some um, grammar forms that you will see it with, and you'll also see it a lot when um, people are speaking, or not see it but hear it. Next form is the things such as, remember that? When we use ya, 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 um, noun, ya, noun, ya, noun, ya, um, and then um, end it with nado. So, fukushu de, things such as, rei ni, we can say, watashi wa ringo ya, ichigo ya, Lingo ya, ichigo ya, mikan nado ga daisuki desu. Watashi wa inu ya, neko ya, usagi ga suki desu. Nado is not necessarily, but it is um, included in this. Toka is works the same way as ya. In fact, use the nouns again. So you might say, Watashi wa lingo to ka, ichigo to ka, mikan to ka, uh, banana nado ga suki desu. Um, or I can end with watashi wa inu to ka, neko to ka, usagi to ka ga suki desu. Or I can say watashi wa sugaku to ka, kagaku ga suki desu. The to ka is not necessary to end, uh, nor Remember, with ya, you need to kind of use at least two. Um, but toka, you can kind of use by itself. So, for example, I can say, Watashi wa inu toka ga suki desu, which I only listen one thing. And But if I say things such as in English, I would say things such as dogs. It means that there's more to that list, right? And it's somewhere in that realm of so that's when I would use toka, um, not necessarily a much of a chill change than ya. It is used in order to make a list of nouns, things such as, and the implication, the, what I'm implying is there's more to this list. All right, so the next one is to... 
um, compound some verbs. And this compound verbs is about changing something or redoing something. So we use a stem, stem form, kaeru. Um, we might say, nori kaeru, um, to re-ride something, norimas, which means to ride something, nori kaeru, to re-ride something. What, well, what does it mean to, to re-ride something or do this thing over again, which is riding? It means when you're transferring transportation, you're going from a bus to a car, or you're going from a car to a train, nori kaeru, or I'm going from train A to train B, nori kaeru. I'm gonna train. I'm going to be changing from one thing to another. Ire kaeru means to iremas to put in. Hai kaeru would mean to re -sub do something. So again, ire kaeru would be to re put something in. What it means, like if you think about it, ire kaeru means to do something over again. So if I mean ire kaeru, in English, it would mean to take something out of something and putting it back into something else in a much neater fashion. So kaba no naka ni hon wo ire kaeru, because it didn't fit the right way the first time, I'm going to rearrange it in ire kaeru, put it in again. Okay, kaki kaeru. Now, how do I rewrite something? Well, maybe I was writing something um, by hand and with an empitsu, and now I'm going to rewrite it on another sheet of paper with perhaps a pen. Or maybe I'm using keshigomu and I'm going to rewrite it because it was messy. Tsukuri kaeru, I'm going to remake something. That's pretty easy to translate it into Nihongo, into Ego. Tsukuri kaeru, I'm going to remake this box. I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to remake it. Um, that's kuri kaeru. And, and usually it implies that you're doing it slightly in a different way. There's a few, and then there's the irregular gomen. Kimas, kimas means to wear. Kigaeru. If there's a tenten and a kaeru. Um, it's most likely the reason be, is because the ki and the ka are too similar and kikaeru sounds a little too difficult. And so um, through language morphology, when it changed, it became kigaeru. So that's just an irregular you're just going to have to remember. Although no one's going to fault you if you say kikaeru, people will still understand that. Um, there's a few you cannot use. Okay. Tabe kaeru, nomi kaeru. Okay, you cannot re-eat something and you can't re-drink something unless you decide you're going to regurgitate it, and that is disgusting. So tabe kaeru, nomi kaeru, you can't re-eat something, you can't re-drink something. Ugh. No. There's a few other ones. Narai kaeru, oshie kaeru. You can't re-teach something and you can't relearn something because every time you teach something, it is something new. You can't redo it um, exactly the way it was and then slightly change it. Same thing as narai kaeru. Once you learn it, you can't relearn it. You've already learned it. All you're doing is remembering it or practicing it. So keep that in mind. Those four you cannot do for sure. There's there's a few more. I just didn't want to point out all of them. And then, of course, um, this chapter also takes an inordinate amount of time of modifiers, uh, meishi modifiers. Um, you can go ahead and look for those and look at the notes. If you don't remember the meishi modifiers, they're located on page yonju yon. Um, and hold on, yonju yon and yonju roku, um, and yonju nana. Yes, yes, of modifying uh, meishi. Um, they have to do with clauses plus nouns, basically the plain forms we talked about. And then clauses plus toki ni. Um, remember when you're modifying time that you um, are basically say when blah, blah, blah versus if, um, which I'll cover in a second. But um, when you do something, you use uh, clauses plus toki ni. Um, present tense, um, present tense with toki. So suwaru toki is, means that when you sit versus suwata toki, when I sat, um, that's pretty kantan, I think. But if you want a refresher for it again in your kyokasho, it's on page 46 and komen. It's on komen, it's on 44 for modifying sentences. It just goes over 
all of the plane forms. And then Yonjuroku, which um, goes over clause form Toki. Again, all of those plane forms that you really should already know. And I went over earlier on in this video. And then we also have in this chapter very briefly um, on actually in the the notes for the the um, modifying and classifying time it just briefly says it but i think that it's important for you to go over these notes so i'm adding these notes to this unit so things that you should remember to tara and ba you did to and tara last year i think we went over ba a little bit but not um completely so um or or i completely forgot last year i don't really remember so i'm just going to include it here so to and tara and ba are if then sentences um they're very much if blank to then blank is really at what, how it is. In English, remember the cause and effect can go all over the place. In Nihongo, the cause is always first and then the effect comes afterwards. They are all used in if-then sentences. Um, there I have listed the different ways of using them. Plain form, verb, tol, um, ta form, tara, can form, verb, bada, ba, and then plain verb nada. These are the four ways of saying if or then. It could be used for when, but when is usually with toki. I have moshi underneath here at the very bottom. I have moshi right here. And moshi is um, to emphasize that if part of the sentence. And it's a time thing, so you can put it at the very beginning of a sentence. So reini, for example, I can say watashi wa um, gakko ni iku to if I go to school, watashi wa gakko ni iku to sensei wa ureshi desu. It's a constant result. Sensei will always be happy if I go to school or if I'm in school. Um, so anything that's a constant result and actual conditions. So you can say, um, uh, fuyu ni naru to when it becomes winter, fuyu ni naru to samuku narimasu. It will get cold. Fuyu ni naru to samuku narimasu. Actual conditions. The other form that you use, the tara form, watashi wo nihon ni ittara. If I go to nihon, watashi wa nihon ni ittara, ano, uh, nihon go wo shaberu kamoshiremasen, right? If I go to Japan, or when I go to Japan, I um, will probably speak in Nihongo. It's not an actual condition. It's not a constant result. So I have to use the tara. Now, in hypothetical situation, so that one was slightly hypothetical, but I'm going to get more into the hypothetical situation. So we use the can form bot. So I might say, Kyo benkyo wo taksan sureba. Kyo benkyo wo taksan sureba. And by the way, I just made a mistake. So it's not completely the can form. It is the um, you would take. Suru is obvious. Shimas is a is a um, irregular uh, anyway. But it's the e sound ba. So it's basically the can form, but shimas becomes sureba, kimas becomes koreba. So those two are irregular, and then the eto one syllable is eba. So technically not the can form verb, it's more like the e sound ba. And then kimasu is koreba, shimasu is sureba, and eto one syllable wa plus leba. So there's that. Um, it's hypothetical situation. So, ano, watashi wa konya takusan benkyo wo sureba. 
明日の試験に良い点を取るはずでしょう。So if I studied a lot tonight, then tomorrow's test I should get a very good score. Hypothetical, right? It is one of those if I do this, then that should happen, or if I do this, that might happen, okay? So, those three are very slight, just like the, the notes I just gave you with shika, dake, and bakari. These are kind of iffy as well. And really, it comes from practice、um, and understanding the language a little bit more with the nuances. And by the way, if you make a mistake between the three,、um, no one is going to stop you and say,、uh, You were completely wrong. That was a hypothetical situation. You can't use that form. They'll just kind of cock their head, like, Oh, did you use that correctly? But really, no one's going to be that angry. Except Sensei, because remember, this is a boom pole for the class, and so therefore I will be testing you. So, and then finally, Nara. Nara goes in the same kind of line as ba, because Nara sometimes gets used with ba, but it's plain form with Nara. It's used as an if then response to someone with contest, contact someone, contacts go in. And you would use it usually and only use it when someone has said something. So,、um, for example, If、uh, no, Sensei no Tomodachi was saying, Oh, Ashita party ni iku yo, like he's gonna go to the party, then I'd be like, Oh, Kare ga iku nara, watashi mo party ni ikimasu. If he's gonna go, then I will go. So in this case, the nara is used. Not in a hypothetical situation, but it's one of those things where, like, if he's going to go, then I will go. It's an in response to someone else with some context to it. So, to, tara, ba, nara. All of them have to do with if then, but the result, the way you use it and when you use it depends upon the, the、um, effect. So, the cause, to, effect. Effect, cause tara effect, cause ba effect, cause nara effect. So, really kind of keep in mind what the effect is in order to figure out which form to use. And that is the end of this unit's notes. If you have any questions, remember to ask Sensei. Immediately. Don't wait till the day before the shken or don't wait until the day of the shken. Let's not be silly.